G'day viewers, welcome to our final episode for 2020 and what a crazy year it has been. This week we're back in the Cobor State Forest to take on one of the tracks that I've wanted to do all year. I've brought a few mates along. I know the Iveco is going to struggle in a few sections, so I'm keen to see how they're all going to go. This is one tough track that's going to see us all working as a team to get through. So let's see how we all go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Cobor State Forest. We've got another fantastic day planned. Typical Irish day, sun is shining, 32 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful, just like home. Today we're in the Cobor State Forest. As you can see, it's a beautiful tall tree forest with lots of bracken around. We look after our state forests all around Victoria. We look after the tracks, the campsites, and ensure that these places are available for everyone to be able to enjoy. So Jerry, tell us about the last time you were out here. You got to do a little bit of Muir's track. That was a bit of a treacherous track, that one. After seeing what happened to you, we were sort of like wondering what was in store for the rest of us. Well, we're going to do the hard part of that track today, Jerry. Bring it on. Obviously, Simon's got some treacherous tracks planned for us today, but hopefully the T60's up to the task and we get to drive home tonight. Hey, Troy, I hear you've been at this area before, but a few years ago. Yeah, it's been a few years since I've been out this way. It's, it's a great little forest. Thanks for turning the weather on. Should be a good day. Simon's got a few tough tracks in store for today. Here we've got the Navara here with the winch and the road safe freight recovery points. Hopefully we don't need them, but I'm sure they'll be ready if we do. I've been given the word that they've got a few surprises ahead for us today because they just want to hear me scream. I'm guessing it's all going to be dry tracks today, Simon. No mud for you guys to get hung up in today, Jackie. Although, I reckon we might just go straight for a mud hole this morning. <laughs> Good on ya. And everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Tony. We've got a guest along travelling with me today. How you going, Tony? Welcome along. Thank you, everybody. Looking forward to today and seeing what these tracks are going to bring us. You're lucky in the Iveco training. The Iveco is certainly a jump up from what I've been in before. It's, it's a, a whole lot bigger. Should be interesting. Convoy a few ruts and holes through here. Just take your time nice and gently. Pick your line, you should be all right. Just watch those branches that are sticking out into the track. Pretty nasty. We started the downhill section through all the ruts and so forth. Initially skeptical about the um, abilities of the Mighty of Echo, but soon turned that opinion around. Some nice angles in there, if you want to play with it, guys. I like the way Simon always chooses the hardest lines. That made the morning interesting. I will come back and give you guys a hand. She's a little bit messed up down here. This is typical of what we see in Cobor. It's not super steep, but it's rutted, it's washed out, and the ruts cross the tracks. Now have a look at this hole. This is massive. Most people would look at this and they'd take the chicken track, but this is actually drivable if you do it carefully with a spotter. Push across to the left now. That's nice, come on that. Fortunately, had Simon given us some direction there. In the end, you know, just taking it easy and uh, letting the car do what it does. Turning into it a little bit. Turn in a bit more, straighten up now, straighten up. Beautiful. Great drive, Jerry, that was awesome. Thanks, Simon, I think we're getting a little bit better. Now with Troy, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to take the easy IFS line. I'm going to take the hard IFS line. I'm going to straddle him up over the bigger hole. Let's see how he goes. I like you on that line. Keep on that. Had a fair bit of erosion and ruts and the like. <laughs> keep coming. You're good. I'm just making sure I keep the steering wheel pointing in the right direction and, and pick the right line. Then have some confidence in the parts on the car. Make that look easy. Make that look way too easy. It is easy. Bring it on, Jackie and Brian. Let's do it. All right, coming on down. Brian's got the nerves of steel. And those flash new radius arms. Pete told me Troy was involved in designing them. Let's hope nothing goes wrong. <laughs> That's good. Keep coming on there. Turn in, turn in, turn in. Stop tooting at me, OK? Well, any of flex in the rear there. That's awesome, guys. Well done. All right, Mike, let's bring it on. Roger. I'm going to put myself into this hole. Yeah, all good. That's nice. Come on, that. Cut across it if you can. 
Just straddle that all the way straight down. Great drive. All right, let's move on to the next section, guys. Well done. Pretty much down at the southern end of Cobor State Forest. Now you can just see the bottom of the valley floor here. She's so rich, lush and healthy. It's doing so well. State forests are available for four-wheel driving, mountain biking, bushwalking, bird watching, hunting, walking your dog. There's so many places for people to enjoy. We really want to talk about our More to Explore app, which you can get off the App Store or Google Play. The More to Explore app gives you maps of where you can find campsites or great four-wheel drive tracks, directions on good routes that you can take, where there might be toilets. All the information is in one handy location on the map and it covers all of Victoria. All right, how's this looking, Tony? It looking pretty interesting. Some decent ruts and rocks at the bottom. Should be fun. The tricky part with this one is that the rocks wash away. You can see the water flow, how it curves yeah. at the bottom of the track. Yep. We are going to try and crisscross that, but there's some large holes in there. Woo! Piece of cake. Our vehicle is built for general touring and not so like hardcore off-roading. We don't want to break anything, but we just want to see how far and how good it can take us. So far, the LDV's held up pretty well. Don't fall down that hole. We're keeping to the left, right? Nice and gentle dropping in. How was that, Jackie? Awesome, of course. It's been really good being able to jump out and have a, a look at the other guys coming down the hill and just seeing the abilities of all of the vehicles, regardless of what they are. Simon went first, and then I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going on that one. I said, I'll just walk ahead and film it. And Brian pulled the marriage card. He said, there's no amendment to the marriage contract, so we either go together or don't go together. So that was the end of that. Just that BDJ flexing and Jackie screaming. <laughs> Jackie is the best. I have a fear of flipping. I have a fear of heights. <laughs> I don't like that sound. Oh, we're going up. Nice wheel lift. Oh, it was fantastic listening to Jackie screaming in the car. We didn't need a radio, just opened the window, you'd hear the whole way across the forest, straight into that down descent and a massive rut on the right hand side. She wanted to get out and film it, but I reckon she was scared. Brian, cool as a cucumber, down into it. Again, another massive wheel lift. Go well, coming down that last one. There was some really deep ruts there, and my car was never going to go through those and come out, just not set up to do that. But we found another path, you know, we got through. That wasn't too bad, just pushing the boundaries and trying something different. I was pretty confident that the car would be fine and wouldn't get damaged or anything like that. There was two obvious lines to choose on that bit of track, and one was the high side that was pretty straightforward. All there was in the ruts, which was a fair bit of a drop in car's not really set up for those big holes and so I went straight down the middle, straddled over the hole, rode one rut and kept one side of the car up on the high side. Turned out alright thankfully. Well, driving gloves are on. I have to say, that crawls very nicely. It does, doesn't it? I was thinking of putting some low range gears in it. I've just had it in four high, is that all right? <laughs> so we're out for our last trip of the year and Simon said he's gonna step it up a bit. And guess what? Boom, bang, he brought it out today. The big guns were out. 
I have never seen wheels lift a meter off the ground. I felt it, no, I felt it. I felt the car go this way and that way, but like everyone tells us, we got good air, but I was in the car. I can't tell you what it looked like, but I felt it. Should have seen it from behind. Cruiser did its job again, articulate, absolutely beautiful. Pressed every button, I turned on the rear lights, the front lights, the top lights, the side lights. None of them helped, but the diff lockers made a huge difference. Ken Flex. Muir's track is one of the famous tracks here. In actual fact, if you ask any mechanics within 200 kilometers of this area, they know someone that's coming here and destroyed a car. This is where it started to get tricky. Clay, soft, sandy, no traction, nothing. Oh, no. Things got a whole lot more technical and challenging. Proceeded up the hill only to take the hard line up, shall we call it, bum crack rock. You make it look so easy. Oh, he's hung up on the step. You just jinxed him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're stuck on the step, Simon, on your left. Yeah, it's stuck on my step right here. We got hung up on the left-hand doorstep, so I'm sort of looking down to see what we have to do to get out of this. Get your hands That's better. Baby. Yeah, baby. Now we're doing it. Woo! We had minimal carnage, shall we say, but others were slightly less fortunate. OK, let's bring it up. Yeah, the Muir's track really beat us a bit. They we... stopped us in those tracks. Yeah. Josh, how are you going to get up there? We haven't, we haven't got the power. Josh, is... We followed the Aveco, and then we kind of got stuck halfway. So Simon did the hard yards and lifted a multitude of rocks and stones. Get up 20 more attempts at this and do more panel damage. So safer and probably quicker and easier. We'll do a quick winch. We really appreciate when people treat the forests well. So if you need to winch at any point, make sure you use a sleeve, you're winching off a tree just to protect the tree. It's also good to keep in mind our cultural heritage, so be careful of what trees you're using. We don't want you winching off a scar tree. <laughs> respect the tracks, respect the forest that you're in, and we can all keep enjoying it. Right in the end, we were teetering on two tiny stones and it just sent us tiny. that way. Tiny, well, they were big, but they moved. Not two metres. <laughs> Yeah. Had to be rescued again yeah. with the winch. Yeah, we, we did the last two rescues and we had to be rescued again. I'm not looking forward to seeing what the car looks like. All I could see was the side all pushed up up against the door and I'm in there going, it's not that bad, but then when we finally got out, it was bad because yeah. it had damaged the sill as well. So. Simon and I had to bounce the step down. And we're only showing the good side right now. <laughs> so yeah, a bit of damage. As soon as we saw the 360 car go up before us and them having trouble, we knew that for us, the best thing to do was take the alternate route and make sure we got to the top. We went up that front of section, so drove up through the middle of that, and that was pretty good. Made sure I had the rear locker in, lifted some wheels, and that was exciting. And the trick and track wasn't even a chicken track, really. It was a really good, solid track. Everyone else got up really easily. It all comes down to preparation, maintenance. Make sure before you go out, you have a look over your vehicle, check everything. If you know you're going out for a few days and it's going to be really dusty, make sure you pull the air filter out, check it. If it needs a new one, give it to it. Pack a spare, just have it there, ready to use if need be. Got to the top and then bang, another opportunity to go absolutely crazy. Look at this, what's ahead of us. Right everybody, this is our last climb for the day. Last section of track, and it's not as tough as the last section, but it is quite challenging. Always looking forward to a challenge, Simon. I will pick the worst line possible, so don't watch where I go. <laughs> we got hung up and couldn't proceed on one spot where we were stuck up on a fairly sharp pointy rock. 
Maybe not. Might try a different line, eh? <laughs> what, really? Nothing. <laughs> Easy compared to the one previously. It was still difficult, had to navigate, but we got up once and we didn't have to reverse down and we didn't have to get winched up. So for us, it was a success. It's good to get out. <laughs> <laughs> good to get out of the office. It's good to get out office. of the office. This is what our customers want. They want to buy from people that have tested their products out on the tracks, and this is just the perfect opportunity to do so. Here they come. There was crossovers that you'd bury a car inside. I remember looking out the window at one stage down to my right and I thought, if I go in there, I'm never getting it out. It's gone, it's gonna live here forever. But as usual, well spotted, well placed, put into the right positions, and we got to the top. As we all know, Simon loves to work out and he loves to make us work out in the cars, but I've never seen anyone move so many rocks today. It was like someone doing hard labour in prison. I need to get a fair bit of help from Simon in doing some rock stacking and putting it together. Sorry Pete, but the step that you damaged last time, I've, I've done it again properly, so it's uh, missing a side step. I suppose lesson for the day is that IFS cars may not be able to follow the solid axle cars all the way. Picking your line and right tyre and things like that, you can, but you might pay the price. Oh, just Miss Jackie. Biscuits. That's four out of five. What a workout. One more to go and let's hope, please, no more rock stacking. Ready to go? Ready to never be, mate. It was the mother of all tracks. It was just like a big wall of rock and we had nowhere to go. You couldn't turn around and find another way out. So I did take my hat off to Simon. If he wasn't there, I think we'd be staying out there tonight. He was running up and down that track, filling holes with rocks to try and get his traction. In the end, we were just slipping off the rocks one way or the other, and I think he did the right thing by calling it and say, right, I've got a winch. It was good to get to the top. Everybody else had finally got there, it was just me. That's the one good thing. You, know, you go as a group, people make sure that you get there and you get home. It's been great to have Four Wheel Drive TV out here promoting our forests. While everyone's been in lockdown, our staff have actually been really busy working on track maintenance and getting everything set up so that as restrictions ease, we can welcome back Victorians into their own backyard. We really encourage everyone to explore them thoroughly. Just find a park or a forest near you. Get out and explore it and enjoy it. What a ridiculous year 2020 has been with challenges all the way. But thanks to your support, we've made it through. We've done all our episodes for Life Off-Road and we're just back from shooting an amazing adventure, five forests in five days for your 4x4. That's gonna air on 7 Mate Saturday at 11.30 a.m. January 30 for five weeks in a row. Make sure you're watching and join us for a massive off-road adventure. Simon Christie and the team from 4 Drive TV bring you all the action in 2021.